KubeCon has become a real tradition amongst this crowd. Many of the folks um, that were at the original uh, Kubernetes conference are here today as well. Every time we come here, it reaffirms the approach to open source communities that we've taken with Kubernetes and are now taking with Istio and Knative new projects. We found that contributing technical ideas to open source communities is a positive sum game for everyone involved. In fact, it leads to new extensions and new opportunities. It also helps us reach a very broad base of users. Google has a long history with open source, you know, contributing everything from Android to contributing to Envoy. But our favorite in Google Cloud continues to be Kubernetes. Speaking of Kubernetes, it is now in its 13th version. Kubernetes 1.13 released last week, and I want to congratulate everybody that contributed to this release. So we've been looking at uh, CNCF statistics that show how many contributions there were to the project over the last year. On average, these 10 entities contributed 80 plus percent of the code to Kubernetes. So big shout out to them. And these, <laughs> these contributions are really fueling broad-based impact. There are many companies that have sprung up that provide training and education and implementation around Kubernetes and also there's been tremendous job growth. But we are not done. There's a lot more to do in helping our users deliver software faster and more reliably. And we're doing it in part by building a Kubernetes native cloud that progressively manages more of the infrastructure and services so that users can focus on what they do best. And part of that is these new projects, Istio and Knative, building on top of Kubernetes. So at the base of this stack, of course, is Kubernetes, which provides resilient, secure infrastructure for any modern application, not just web services, but also stateful applications. And as a proof point, on GKE, more than 40% of clusters are running stateful applications. As a proof point for resilience, many of the retailers in the US and worldwide used Kubernetes just this, black, this past Black Friday to scale to new heights all with zero outages. And this is getting easier now with hands-free auto-provisioning. So users can start to focus on higher layers. This is where Istio comes in. Istio is a service mesh based on Envoy that provides service level visibility so developers can think about their applications. It raises the level of abstraction and gives you a bird's eye view of all the services that are running in your environment. It provides service discovery, observability and monitoring, and also the ability to set up security, service-to-service -service encryption and policies around communication. And of course, since it is based on a proxy, it provides traffic control. Today, we're really happy that Istio is available as a single-click deployment on GKE for new and existing clusters. But we're not stopping there. The next layer of the stack is much more develop developer-friendly. It's perhaps the most powerful piece, which is Knative also an open source project. Knative is a, is a portable serverless framework. And so a developer writes their application and Knative handles building the container, creating the service, and deploying the application, scaling it from zero to one, as well as scaling it down when you're done. And in the most recent release, Knative 0.2, we've added support for events. So let's do a demo. Sorry, we can go back. Yes, so here we are, we're starting a Kubernetes cluster in GKE, and with one click there you see you can enable Istio, and with another click you can enable Knative as a serverless add-on. So now this cluster is created with Istio and Knative fully enabled. That means you can do things like zCloud serverless deploy directly from an image all the way to a URL. So notice that as a developer, I didn't have to create a node pool. I didn't have to create or deploy a service. I didn't have to expose that service and worry about ingress and all the networking. I didn't have to set up the auto scaling. And at the end of the day, I get a URL that's serving my application code. Uh, and in fact, it's going to auto scale this up and down based on the number of requests. So this is a lot of ease. But what's even more powerful, if you can move on, is you don't have to use G Cloud. You can actually use, because 
Knative is open and portable, you can use ConCuddle or CanCuddle. We'll see how that pans out. But you can use the open source CLI, which um, works the same way, and you can take the code from GitHub, from source, all the way to URL. This portability is really important, and it is what's behind the industry aligning around Knative. Knative is still very new, but here at this conference, multiple companies, IBM, Pivotal, Red Hat, SAP, and others, are starting to use Knative as part of their functions offerings. So this combination of Kubernetes, Istio, and Knative really provides a cloud that propels you into the future. It can run functions, it can run stateless applications, it can also run stateful applications and databases, any modern application. And it's fully open source and portable, so you can run it on your laptop, you can run it in your cloud, you can run it in your data center at the edge. One platform, no friction. So as developers, you know, this might be a stack to use, it might be something in the future that you can extend to really power the life cycle of your application and maybe use a marketplace. I encourage you to try it out um, on GitHub or on GKE, and to learn more, you can subscribe to our podcast. Thank you.